let's talk about the terrain stand. If you find yourself wanting a bump, a hill, a hole, a ditch, or a road where there isn't one, this tool is for you. Let's hit up on the D-pad and bring up the objects menu. Now go to tools, common, general, and all the way at the bottom is the terrain stand. Let's spawn one of these in the world and make sure we have a clear view of the ground. Now let's go to the properties. First is the category. This determines what the terrain tool is doing. A few of these categories only affect the decal on the ground, like the surface, driving line, road and path, and road markings. The rest also change the formation of the terrain to create flat ground, bumps, ditches, hills. You get the idea. Our second option is decal. Depending on what you select in this category, these options will change. For categories that only change the texture, each decal will be different textures you can use. For the categories that also adjust shaping, each decal will have different shaping variations as well. Our next option, decal, can be turned off and you can use the original terrain's texture. The colorize option will bring up a color picker you can use to change the color of your decal. The alpha will change the transparency of your decal. Height type controls how the tool affects the height. Set to none, the tool has no height. Set to height, the terrain height is controlled by the right and left triggers. Set to flatten, the height is set by the height of the tool's icon, and the triggers will adjust the flatness of the shape. The clear foliage checkbox will automatically remove any grass, bushes, or trees from the area within the terrain mod. Next is use custom collision materials. Selecting this option will bring up a slider to select materials that will get kicked up from the bike's tires when you ride over them. Now let's move on to adjusting your terrain mod. As usual, you can use the analog sticks to move it around and click R3 to snap it to the driveline. There are three states of adjustments that can be changed by hitting the right shoulder button. First, let's start with rotation. This mode is identified by a big red circle that appears around the terrain tool icon. In this mode, you can use the left and right triggers to rotate the shaping tool. R3 will reset the default rotation. Next is scaling. This has a blue and red line protruding from the icon representing the two dimensions you could scale, X and Z. You can use the left and right triggers to scale up and down proportionally. Right scales up, left scales down. Or you can use the right analog stick to scale each axis individually. Left and right scales the X axis, up and down scales the Z axis. R3 in this mode will reset the X and Y axis to their default size. The next mode is height. This is represented by a green line coming out of the top of the icon representing the Y axis. In this mode, you can use the left and right triggers to scale the height. Keep in mind, this mode has no effect if you were working with one of the texture only categories. One thing to note is the height will scale differently depending on which category you are working with. For instance, if you have a hill, the right trigger will make the hill taller. But if you have a ditch, the right trigger will make the ditch deeper. R3 will reset to the default height. The next thing we need to discuss is layering. Sometimes you may want to have multiple terrain tools in one area. Say, for example, you create a bump to ride over and you want to add a driving line texture on top of it. When placing terrain tools, the layering of the texture decal is decided by the height of the texture tool icon. For our example, we will place the icon for the driving line above the icon for the hill. One thing to remember when using the terrain tool is that when adjusting many of the settings, the texture and terrain will not visibly update while you are making adjustments. Only once you've stopped making the changes for a moment will you see the results.